my experience uh, when I appeared for PhD neuroscience at uh, IISC Bangalore almost two years ago. Uh, since interviews are coming now uh, at IISC from 13th to 19th May, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so uh, mine happened in uh, May 2023. And at that time, uh, my NCBS interview was also scheduled. So actually, I was staying at NCBS. Uh, I stayed there for longer than uh, uh, what they sort of uh, le uh, what was the time given for uh, given to us for like four days. But I stayed there for like seven days. Um, I requested them that uh, I have IAC interviews and I want to stay a little more. And so I, I was paying uh, about 150 rupees a day. So, but if you're if you are not at NCBS, uh, you can sort of either get a hotel in Yeswantpur or in Matikere. Uh, there are many hotels nearby. Or if you have, if you have a friend in campus, you can sort of uh, stay with them. Uh, people even stay without even informing the administ administration. Anyway, uh, so th there are two rounds of interviews in most departments at IASC. Uh, uh, in neuroscience, yes, there are two rounds of interviews. Um, and difficulty level of both the rounds, I would say, is uh, roughly same. And usually they ask questions from your uh, master's or bachelor's background. Uh, so I came from MSc Physics, so they asked me a lot of physics and mathematics questions. Um, and so let's say if someone comes with, with an MSc in geology or microbiology or, or a BTEC in um, civil engineering uh, or electrical engineering, you know, electrical engineering is very common here. Uh, we see many uh, ECE and uh, electrical engineers here, even physics people. Uh, uh, for that matter, people from psychology backgrounds also come. So they will ask you, ask the questions from your master's or uh, bachelor's background. Uh, I think I had a little advantage uh, in the sense that uh, I was asked physics, que physics questions and they were not very difficult. So they were from sort of 12th or uh, bachelor's uh, level. Okay, so uh, Okay, let me talk briefly about uh, what they asked me in round one. So there were three uh, members in the panel. And, and uh, uh, vectors and uh, he gave me a matrix and sort of asked me to think about eigenvalues. And even before solving the problem, what do I think about eigenvalues? What might be uh, the eigenvalues? Uh, what properties would they follow, etc. And uh, another professor asked me about radioactivity. Uh, and uh, I had mentioned that I'm interested in visual illusions. Uh, so one professor happened to ask me about uh, what is, uh, how is it that uh, uh, one person perceives a thing differently than other? Uh, whether it, is it the sensation thing or uh, perception thing? Uh, uh, in the second round, there were six uh, members in the panel and uh, one professor who actually comes with a physics background, he asked me about diffraction due to lens, uh, what will be the intensity distribution. Um, they asked me, uh, uh, they, uh, they asked me to sort of draw XN potential, uh, sort of uh, the diagram of a neuron and how XN potential works, and can neuron be modeled as RC circuit, etc. And I think I made a mistake there, and I even asked them, K -K, what do you think? Uh, what will be the answer? So they they kind of keep uh, helping you. Uh, one tip I have for you is that. Keep verbalizing what you're thinking. Um, so instead of just uh, standing there uh, frozen, you can start with the problem. Uh, you take a first step, uh, make a diagram, write an equation, whatever the question is about, and uh, and whatever you're thinking, say it. Then they will help you actually. Uh, in second round, one professor happened to ask me a lot of graphs. And I think that was sort of my strong join, and that's part of the reason I'm here. Uh, they asked me uh, some four or five graphs. Uh, they started with uh, mod x plus mod y equals one, and then mod x square plus mod y square equals one, then uh, uh, um, uh, mod x to the n plus mod y to the n equals one, where uh, n tends to infinity and stuff like that. Uh, so I many of my other friends also told me that uh, these people come with BTEC uh, bioengineering or um, you know uh, biology background, MSc biology background. They were also asked a lot of uh, not a lot of but a few maths questions like draw simple graphs like y equals x plus seven or y equals x square um, and statistics questions. You know what is mean, median, standard deviation, um, what is significance level, and this and that. So a bit of statistics and maths will help. Uh, so 
Another thing that I, I can recommend is a YouTube uh, lectures list called uh, Two Minute Neuroscience by a channel called uh, Neuroscientific Challenged, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so overall, I, I would say for me, I think it was relatively easier uh, given that uh, they couldn't ask, they had to ask me physics and maths questions. And, uh, um, and th those were not at ma those questions were not of master's level actually, so it, it, they were these were easier questions. So what helps I think anyone is to cover a little bit of maths, particularly if you are uh, from life science background, uh, cover a bit of maths, uh, particularly graphs, you know, simple graphs like y equals sine x, y equals x square, y equals x minus seven, uh, y plus x minus three equals zero, and stuff like that and a bit of statistics and uh, they didn't ask me about my master's project uh, perhaps because it was in like photonics it was some part of physics which is not relevant in neuroscience um yeah so that's pretty much it what else would i like to add yeah the second round of interview happened three days after the first round if i if i recall well and the same actually applies for many other departments. Uh, uh, one thing that helps is if you if you get a few initial questions wrong, or let's say you can't answer, uh, it's okay because there will be more questions. You can say I don't know, or um, I'm, I'm I'm not sure. And one thing that helps is that you don't have to answer all the questions, and you don't have to you don't always have to know the answers. Actually, uh, you can. If you if you have no idea what they are asking, then you just say, okay, okay I don't know, uh, I don't know this particular thing. Uh, but uh, if you kind of have I you have some idea about half, half the things that they mentioned, then you can start by uh, sort of uh, one thing that has asked. Could you repeat the question? Uh, or you can start by explaining what you have understood, and then you can tell them, okay, uh, could you repeat the question? Uh, and then they actually help you. So. So kind of my number one tip is uh, don't just stand there. Uh, it's okay to get uh, anxious uh, at the beginning, and so th even the sort of the freezing response is very common. But then, then you get back, you realize you kind of calm down a little bit. And with time, I think you will be okay. All right, all the best. See you here in ISC. Bye bye.